All right, so I'm just gonna try to do this in one take. I'm not really a video editor. I don't really have one. Uh, I just like doing cool electronic setups. Uh, I like helping people out. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in Rust with electronics. So if you guys have any ideas for like new setups, interesting setups, uh, I can set it up and uh, I'll post it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to explain how to do the automatic sprinklers. Uh, my teammate actually requested this uh, from the new update. What she would do is uh, just manually turn it on, manually turn it off, and uh, yeah, she just wanted a, an easier way to uh, do this. See if I could figure it out. But um, I apologize in advance if I... Uh, if I stop talking for a while, because I'm probably just referencing a prior diagram. Uh, a lot of these setups that I make, I kind of just invent as I go along. I mean, I kind of just figure stuff out, so that's why the wires, my cables, my cabling kind of turns into like spaghetti. Ends up doing that and crossing and like the last video. Um, but I mean, in a regular server, I like to hide my wires. Uh, I usually use the foundation, like the back of walls, kind of like that, uh, but better. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I'm also going to explain a lot of, uh, a lot of these components too, uh, in case you guys don't know. So I like to use electrical branches, as you can see, as you can choose how much power uh, comes out. I like being able to choose. Uh, okay. So, what I use, I use, is, I use timers. So I'm just going to set these up right here. One timer is going to determine how long the sprinklers are going to stay on for. Okay. And then this timer, second timer, is going to be how long the cooldown is. So depending on where you are in the desert, swamplands, the desert, you're probably going to need to water more often. So this cooldown timer is going to have to be a lot shorter. Um, if you're in like a swampy area, I'm just guessing because I really don't know much about agriculture yet from the new update. But um, I'm guessing you're not going to have to water plants as much and all their stats and all that stuff. So, okay. So timers are pretty pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, power in, power out, and the only way for power to go through is to manually activate it, right? So uh, they won't activate on their own unless something causes it to toggle. So I'm just going to give them some power first. Uh, like I said earlier, the wiring is going to be pretty bad, but if you follow along, you'll understand. Um, the power I'm getting is from this test gen. It's back here. I, you can see that I kind of threw a branch on the ground, kind of snuck it through. I saw a little bit of wires in the back, so that's where I stuck it in. Okay, and then what I do is I uh, chose how much power I want to go out into this timer and we'll figure that out later but for now I'm just going to piggyback all of these piggyback this one and I've seen another setup for auto sprinklers apparently it works I haven't tried it yet but I will um, they use memory cells uh, I I've tried memory cells before done some pretty cool little trap rooms with turrets and stuff, memory cells, um, but I'm not that experienced. I prefer to go the uh, XOR switch or exclusive OR switch. Uh, it's a little bit different from an OR switch. Uh, the way this thing works is the only way for power to go out is if there is an input in A or an input in B. If there's power going into both of them, 
that will de-energize the output. So in a normal OR switch, you can have power going into both of these and still have power coming out. OR switch, one input A or input B will cause it to go out, but exclusively XOR. It's exclusive input, so it's only dedicated to one or the other, not both. So I am going to give it some juice here. Okay. And that is going to create the trigger to turn on these uh, timers. So that's going to trigger the timer because... So I'm going to put this one up here since it'll help you understand. This is how I usually do my... Uh, this is how I usually figure stuff out. That's why in the last video you kind of saw like everything was everywhere. So I'm going to branch this out. One is going to toggle this timer, and one is going to toggle this timer, okay? And you can already see that the timer didn't activate because there's not enough power going out. So this can stay too because I'm only using two power, one for that, one for that. Uh, so that is, I'm going to do the count real quick. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to need four. I think. Either four or five. Not entirely sure. Okay. It looks... Yeah, it looks... Looks like it works. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do... Um, first, let me set the timer. I'm going to set this one. Oh, damn it. This is my sprinkler timer, so I'm going to set it for five seconds for now. I mean, you can make your sprinkler stay on for however long you want. Um, I think ours was like 45 seconds to a minute to keep the crops going from where we were trying it. And I'm going to do the cooldown timer for maybe 25. Okay. Um, so we're not going to worry about this output yet. We are going to worry about this. So what this is going to do, this is going to create the feedback for the uh, XOR switch. The reason why I'm doing that is while this is on, it's going to de-energize toggle so it doesn't toggle, it doesn't keep re-toggling or in this in this game I think it's just they have to be reset first or if there's power, if there's like constant power on this, it won't keep activating it. Something has to actually toggle it. But yeah, use this as an output and Yeah, it should auto. It should already start working. The timer should already be working on the road. Okay, so let's see if that works. Five seconds. That goes off, and then once this turns off, it should. Remember, we got that power going into the. So we got constant power here, but once this resets, it'll turn that back on because right now both of these are energized. So it'll leave one, which will re-toggle both of these. See, there's no power going into them. Bam. So, real quick, it kind of reactivated real quick because we actually did de-energize. See how they're de-energized right now? So right now, this toggle should not be two. This is why I use counters, because sometimes um, you get false readings. So, it's zero right now, actually. And, uh, bam, quick reset. And you can see the lights. That's how you know they're working. Okay, so we have... More power to work with. Um, okay, so next we're gonna work on this timer uh, because we have no, we have nothing going into this pump, right? And this pump is kind of like, kind of reminds me of a memory cell, to be honest. So we need a source of power. Uh, it only requires one energy, which is nice. Uh, we just need something that'll just keep it on, you know. Um, just a constant source, so I'm just gonna put a nice little branch there. Happy little branch. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna right there for power. The wires are already starting to get all crazy looking. Um, okay, so 
Now we need to know when to turn the switch on, right? When when should the switch turn on? And I think that's when this thing activates. That's when we should turn that on. So right now this output has nothing. Um, for now, I'm just going to... Oh shit, it's already getting cluttered. So I'm going to put this over here. But remember, that's, that's for this output, okay? So this is why... It gets bad. It gets real bad. Okay. So switch on is where we want it. Okay. Um, should switch on. I might need to add a little bit of juice to it. There. So now it's turning on. But let's not do that yet. We don't have... We're not able to turn it off yet. So I want to be able to turn it off. So... When should we turn this off? Um, I forgot, so I'm going to double check real quick. Um, oh, okay. Right. So that should turn off. The way I did it was I added another X4 switch. Right. So there's no power going into that right now. So we can have that. Uh, let's not do that yet. So I might need another electrical branch. That's some power, because this is the free power that hasn't been touched yet. See, they're all piggybacked into back to the generator. So I'm going to use that to give the power. So we need to... We need the switch to toggle off when this thing turns off, right? Once it turns off, that's when we want this to toggle the switch off. So right now it's on, so let's see when it would be, when it would actually toggle, right? So it resets. Okay, so while this is on, it's actually, Energize, so we need power from this. All oh, right. So what I'm going to do is use this as feedback because once this turns off, once it's on, it'll de-energize that. Now I got to give it some more juice. Just put five just to be safe. So this should turn off when this turns on because we're gonna get power on both ends. So there we go. So they're on right now. And then when that de-energizes, that actually energizes this. So what I'm trying to say is I want to put that on switch off so it automatically turns them off. And that's how you do it. Sorry I was confusing, but I mean here's the diagram uh, it's the finished product see them all going off once this timer ends it'll toggle it off okay right honestly uh, wiring to me it's not a big deal I mean I've seen people do like the crazy like wire management uh, in a PvP server I mean I like to hide wires I don't like to make them look all pretty but I mean we're all different because people are actually role players but what I do is I hide them this is a good example of what I do so they just look like that looks pretty I was working on this just to help you understand and uh, what I did was I kind of threw everything in the back here. I just sneak everything back here. Well, yep, thanks again for... Let's see if it works, actually. 
Okay, that works. Thanks again for uh, watching. Um, just leave a comment if you have any ideas, and I can uh, help you set stuff up. Um,